It's not like you didn't know that you needed to invest for the long term. It's just that you either don't care about it, you don't want to learn about it, or the whole thing just feels like it's so overwhelming that you don't know where to start. Although the vast majority of my videos are about how to invest for the long term by being an active investor, you don't need to do it actively. It's more important that you just get started and just invest for the long term. And there are ways to do it where you don't have to spend too much time getting it ready or continuing it into the long term. If this sounds like you and you just want the quick and dirty about how you can get your long-term investing started and just keep it going without putting too much time in it, then this video is for you. Most people already know why you'd want to invest for the long term. You want to take the money that you're making right now and grow the wealth so that you'll be able to retire in the future without having to work. However, it's important to remember that no investing is risk free. All the investing you're going to do has the potential of whatever money you put into it to lose value instead of gain value. So when you want to do passive long-term investing, you want to keep your risk low so that you have a higher chance of retiring in the future. When it comes to passively investing for the long term, most people use the S&P 500, which is an index that tracks 500 of the biggest stocks on the U.S. stock market and their performance over the long term. Since its inception, the S&P 500 returns an average of 8 to 10 percent in gains each each year, not including the dividends that it pays out. And although this has remained true for more than a hundred years, there are no promises or guarantees that this will continue into the future, so you need to know that going in. However, the chances that the S&P 500 would go to zero are incredibly slim, and in the event that that happens, the cataclysmic event that caused it would be so bad you probably wouldn't be worried about where your retirement accounts were. However, if you're one of those people who can't wrap your head around losing money over time, let let me put it to you this way. I look at it like this. I have three choices. I cannot invest but not be able to retire in the future because the money I'm making right now won't be able to pay for my retirement. I can invest now, have the investments lose in value and not be able to retire. Or I can invest now, have the investments grow over time and then be able to retirement. So out of those three choices, only one of them is the outcome I want and that outcome requires that I invest for the long term. So for me, I have no no choice. I have to put my money to work. The easiest way to set money aside for retirement is if your employer has a 401k where they match a certain amount of money that you put into that 401k. A 401k isn't a kind of investment. It's a kind of investment account. After your money goes into the account, you have choices about how that money will be invested. And those choices are dependent on which provider your employer chose when it chose its 401k provider. Some 401k providers offer a myriad of choices including something called an age-dependent account. In that case, you choose the year that you're going to retire and the account automatically adjusts its risk profile as you get closer and closer to retirement. In other words, if you're pretty young when you start, you'll be in riskier investments that have a higher chance of returning a greater return. But as you approach retirement age, it will move you into more and more conservative investments so that although you won't be earning as much money, the risk of losing money will be decreased substantially. Alternatively, a lot of 401ks will allow you to just pick an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, in which case you're just doing what everybody else is doing, tracking the main index that has increased over time. Regardless of the investments that you choose your 401k to be put into, it's important that you put in as much money as will be matched by your employer. For example, if your employer will match up to 5% of your income, you should put in at least 5% of your income because that's basically free money. In other words, if you make $50,000 a year and you put $2,500 into your 401k, your employer will match that, putting an additional $2,500 per year into your 401k. It's basically free money. After you've maxed out your employer match on your 401k, you shouldn't just keep putting money into it. If you make less than $144,000 a year as an individual or less than $244,000 a year as a married couple, you're eligible for what's called an individual retirement account. There are two types of these accounts, known as IRAs, the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. Both of them will allow you to put up to $6,000 per year into the account if you're under the age of 50, and if you're over the age of 50, you can put up to $7,000 a year into either of these accounts. It may sound kind of complicated that there are two different accounts, but the difference is actually quite simple. With a traditional IRA, you can put in your money before it's been taxed. You don't pay income tax on any of the money that's in the account until you start withdrawing it in retirement. With a Roth IRA, the money 
that you put into the account is taxed in advance. When you retire, you pay absolutely no income taxes on either the original investment or the gains that you've made in the time that it's been in the account. So at this point, you might ask yourself, which one should I open, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA? And there are a few questions you should ask yourself to determine which one you'd prefer. First up, do you plan to spend more money in retirement than you do before you retire? If that's the case, then you're going to have a higher tax bracket in retirement and you would prefer a Roth because that way you won't be paying the higher taxes when you retire. However, if you think you're going to be spending less money in retirement than you do before you retire, then you'd want a traditional IRA because then you would have less income that you'd be taxed on in retirement than you do right now. The second question you want to ask yourself is how high do you think taxes are going to be in your retirement? If you think they're going to be higher than they are now, then you'd probably want a Roth IRA since you wouldn't be paying any taxes on it. If you think the tax rate would be relatively unchanged from where it is now and you're going to be spending less money in retirement than you do now, then you'd prefer a traditional IRA so that you could pay the taxes on that less money in the future than you'd have to pay on it now. Another key factor to remember about the difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA is since a Roth IRA is taxed in advance, you can actually withdraw your contributions, not your gains, but your contributions in advance with no fee before you retire. However, you need to keep in mind that you should only withdraw from your Roth IRA in the event of a serious emergency. Although you can replace the funds that you withdraw from your Roth IRA, it has to be done in the same year. If you don't do it in the same calendar year, then you've just missed the opportunity and there's no putting those funds back. Just like a 401k, an IRA is not an investment vehicle. It's simply an investment account. So you still have to pick the investments that you use in the IRA. And although IRAs will allow you to invest in a myriad of different stocks, bonds, and even cryptocurrencies, we're trying to keep it simple. So let's refer back to what we said before and stick with an index fund. There are many providers of index funds out there, but for me, my favorite is Vanguard. They've been doing it the longest and they have the lowest fees in the industry. So you're likely to get the best gains using an S&P 500 or other tracking fund from them than you would from another provider. And there are two different ETFs that I look at when it comes to what I would do with a Vanguard fund. The most popular Vanguard ETF is one you've probably heard of. It's their oldest and it's called the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index or VTI. The VTI tracks the entire US stock market, every single stock in the stock market. So you get exposure to the smallest companies as well as the largest companies and every single company in between. The expense ratio or the amount of money that VTI charges you for management is 0.03% annually. However, that fee comes out of the fund itself. It's not like you're going to get a bill. It just means that the performance of the fund will be 0.03% less than all of the stocks that it's tracking. The other figure you should look at when looking at any ETF is the yield, which is also known as the dividend. This is free money that you get each year from your ETF. And in this case, it's 1.37%. That means you get an additional 1.37% in free money for every year you hold this ETF. And although historically the United States has outperformed the rest of the globe when it comes to the overall stock market performance, maybe you'd like an ETF that is exposed more to the global stock market and not just the United States. In this case, I'd take a look at the Vanguard Total World Stock Market ETF with the ticker symbol VT. This ETF doesn't just track the US stock market, it tracks every stock market in the entire world. So you have exposure not just to United States companies, but every company in the world. Because the management is a little bit more complicated for this ETF, the expense ratio or the fee that you pay for maintenance is slightly higher. Instead of the 0.03% you'd pay on VTI, this one is 0.07% annually. But once again, it comes directly out of the ETF. And just like VTI, VT does pay a dividend yield every single year. However, because of the fluctuations in the global stock market and every single company around the world, they can't give you a consistent yield number like they can on VTI but it does pay a dividend. As for what makes up VT, you can see that the vast majority is still North American based companies at 62.8%. But in addition to that, you have 10% of emerging markets and 15% in Europe, as well as 10% in Pacific. So you get a pretty accurate blend of how the entire world economy works. You get exposure to everything, not just the United States. So if you believe that global growth is going to be stronger than just United States growth into the future, this ETF might be the one for you. 
Next up, how to get started. Now, when it comes to your 401k, it's as easy as calling your human resources department, asking what the match is for your 401k program, and then calling payroll and having them set the deduction out of your paycheck to that match. When it comes to opening up an individual retirement account or IRA, almost every stockbroker offers IRA options. Now, for me, I like Schwab. That's my preferred broker. So although pretty much every stockbroker offers an IRA, I would stick to Schwab. And if you use the referral link in my show notes below, you'll actually get a little bit of a referral bonus. I don't get anything from Schwab for referring you. They ask me to do it just out of goodwill, which I do. They are the best to me, and that's why I refer them, not because I'm getting something from the company. I'm not sponsored, and I get no money from them at all. Other popular brokers include Ameritrade, Fidelity, E-Trade, Vanguard, and even Robinhood. So it's up to you which kind of a broker you'd like to go with. You can take a look at all the different features that they provide. But one thing should remain in common. There should be no fees for you to open up an IRA. There should be no commission charge for trading in or out of a stock, an equity, or a bond. And there should be no maintenance fees of any kind. And all of the brokerages that I just mentioned meet that criteria. After opening your account, you can choose how much you want to deposit and how you do it. Some of them will offer recurring deposits where they'll automatically withdraw money from a checking or savings account every time you decide them to do it, or you can do it manually. The nice thing about the government raising the cap to $6,000 in an IRA means that you can deposit $500 each month and that will equal the $6,000 over the course of the year. Once you've opened up your IRA and you've set up your deposits, you might want to find a broker that allows you to do what's called a recurring buy. With a recurring buy, you can choose a day of a week or a day of a month where you'll automatically make your next purchase of whatever ETF it is you've selected. That way it's very set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about your emotions being affected when it comes to whether or not the stock market is up or down that day. Instead of you having to make that conscious choice, it will make that choice for you by just buying that ETF with the set amount that you've set in advance, no matter whether or not it's up or down. Although all brokers will allow you to do this manually, this video is targeted for those of you who want passive investing and don't want to have to worry about doing it yourself. So let's say you've matched out your 401k, you've opened up your IRA, but you still have have extra money that you'd like to invest that's lying around. What can you do? Depending on how much you like your 401k, you can actually refer back to it and invest that money up to the maximum that you can put into your 401k. Alternatively, you could also open up a standard brokerage account with the same brokerage that provides your IRA. Everything works the same on a standard brokerage account just as it does on a standard IRA, except it works more like a Roth IRA. You will be paying income tax on any money that goes into that account. And when you've retired and you're withdrawing from the account, you will be paying taxes on the gains. Not the original amount you put in, but any profits you make. So it doesn't work like a Roth or a traditional IRA. That's what makes the IRA so special. However, it does mean that you still have another alternative way to be able to put money to work in the markets, bonds, or anywhere else without having to worry about that money just lying around earning you nothing. To learn more about investing and personal finance, check out my other videos here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.